Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research, Education, and Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. We're excited to have Hillary Carter here today. She is a 2009 Cell and Developmental Biology major, and she is here today um, to tell us a little bit about her. And so we're glad to have you. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you did while you're here at Vanderbilt. Sure. So first, let me just say thank you for having me here. It's such an honor to be invited back after um, having undergrad and graduate school, um, having gone to undergrad and graduate school at Vanderbilt. So um, I work at the U.S. Department of State in the Office of Cooperative Threat Reduction, where I'm a team chief and the senior advisor for biosecurity. And our office um, mission is to work with partner countries to strengthen biosecurity, nuclear security, and chemical security. And so what I do is I oversee a team um, who, whose job it is to identify novel and emerging threats and then develop mitigation plans to address those threats in the bio, um, nuke, and chem arenas. Um, I also oversee another team um, whose job it is to justify our annual budget, um, execute the budget, and then also uh, monitor and evaluate our foreign assistance funds. Okay, so this was obviously not what you did at Vanderbilt. Tell me about um, how you got from Vanderbilt to this role. Sure. So um, I went right from graduate school after doing a, a very small postdoc in the same lab that I um, did my graduate research in um, to the State Department through a mechanism called the American Association for the Advancement of Science, um, Science and Technology Policy Fellowship, so known um, as the AAAS Fellowship. Um, and this is a fellowship that takes scientists with PhDs or engineers with a certain level of experience um, and places them in the foreign or in the federal government to um, infuse the policymaking process with scientific expertise and um, critical thinking skills, skills that scientists do possess. Okay. So um, what are some of the things that you gain from your training at Vanderbilt that you use now in your current role? I think... Um, the skills that I learned at Vanderbilt through graduate school, um, although some of them aren't directly applicable, there's a lot of them that are definitely transferable. Um, one that I would highlight is the ability to think critically about something. Um, in graduate school, we're always trying to identify um, or ask answer a question, and then I uh, develop assays to answer that question. And I think you can apply that same process to what I do now in terms of you are given all this data, um, you need to parse out the data and identify which parts of it is important to making a decision and then present that data to someone who perhaps is making the decision. Um, so I think the critical thinking skills are um, definitely very important. Um, the other thing I would say that is import, important um, is organization. And so in the lab, you're kind of your own project manager. You're running your experiments. You're perhaps working with other collaborators or technicians. Um, you're reporting these things up the chain to your boss um, and taking those skills and then applying them to the position that I'm in um, is incredibly helpful because you're doing a lot of the same things and you need to maintain the um, email flow um, and find a way to organize how you respond to all of the emails, which is, you know, could be 200 or so a day. Um, so I think organization is a really important skill um, that you learn in grad school that can be transferred to several different things. Um, another thing that I would say is communication skills, um, written and um, oral communication skills. I would say that the way um, science is written about in terms of publications is very different than it is in the position I'm in currently. Um, you basically have to put the bottom line up front or in, in, um, at the State Department, but in grad school you kind of um, navigate your audience to whatever your conclusion is. And so as, as soon as you learn um, the difference, um, taking the skills that you had in grad school, um, it's easy to apply that to putting the bottom line up front and then supporting it underneath. Okay, so you have a very interesting role. I'm sure, um, you know, currently where you are, you went from fellowship to your current position. How mm -hmm. did you go to that, you know, how did you make that transition after your fellowship? Mm -hmm. So I stayed in the same office. Um, during the fellowship, I was a program officer. 
Um, after the fellowship, I stayed in that exact same role um, as a program officer and then transitioned into a deputy team chief role um, and then transitioned into the role that I'm in now. And um, again, I've stayed in the same office, so I've been there for almost five years now and um, have tried to acquire different skill sets to move into these different roles and then also take initiative um, to be able to do the job adequately. Okay, so how is it a good fit for you personally? I think the the office that I'm in is a really good fit in the sense that we are a very teamwork oriented office. Um, and I love working in teams. I think the product is better um, when we come working in teams. And so I think that has been um, a really good fit for me and uh, my background, um, not only in the lab, but also outside of the lab as well. Um, I would say another reason it's a good fit is um, I'm still able to use my technical background, um, but I, I don't have to focus exclusively on one problem like I was in the lab. Um, I was identifying a problem and knew you know every aspect of whatever that question was I was asking. Um, in, in my current role, I can um, focus more broadly, but still use my technical expertise and apply it to a broad range of issues, not a singular issue as it was in grad school. Okay, very interesting. So what are some things that current trainees, either PhD students or postdocs, um, could pursue now during their training if they wanted to do a role like you currently have? I would say, um, and I would, encourage people to get involved and get involved with whatever aligns with their interest. Um, that could be being part of a policy discussion that goes to the Hill and asks for more money for scientific funding. It could be something completely unrelated, which is um, you know getting involved with your community and working with um, populations that need assistance in some way. I would just recommend getting involved in any way that you can and demonstrate that you do have interest outside of the lab and demonstrate that you are able to communicate outside of a scientific audience um, and even if and perhaps communicate science to a lay audience I think would be something that would be worthwhile to be involved in. Okay so I'm sure in your field you do a, a fair bit of networking. What mm -hmm. are some of the strategies and, and what does networking mean to you now as a professional? Yeah so in DC there are tons of networking events um, and I think taking advantage of those and meeting people and always putting um, kind of your your best foot forward in those sense because you never know when you're going to want to talk to someone who perhaps is um, in a job that you would like to find out more information on. I think another thing is setting up informational interviews. I mean even if you're not particularly um, if you don't if you don't necessarily want to work at that place but you want to learn more about it that could lead you to other opportunities um, so setting up informational interviews that could open the door to a lot of different um, possibilities that you may be interested in um, I would also say um, using the broader network of your kind of closer network um, so if you have friends who you know, have friends who work on the hill, let's say, and you want to get hill experience, um, finding a way to uh, meet with them. Okay, great. So what are some things that you wish um, you knew as a PhD student that you know now? Um, I would say that um, there, is, there are a lot of alternate careers outside of um, being a scientist. And I think it's fantastic for those people who want to be laboratory scientists um, and go on to be PIs. Um, that was not something that I wanted to pursue. And so it was a pretty um, dark day, perhaps, when I realized that you know bench science at the um, in the lab day in and day out was not going to be my future and not knowing what those possibilities were was a little was quite um, um, it was a little discouraging but I would say that I, had I known all the possibilities that are out there and um, how you can um, start with one, down one career path and then quickly transition to another because you already have the transferable skills of um, critical thinking, communication skills, organization um, that you developed in grad school, they're easily transferable to others. Good. Okay, so last question. I know we talked a little bit before the interview. You have two small children. What does mm -hmm. your work-life balance look like for you? Yeah, and this is a great question. It's something that's evolved um, over the past four and a half years, I'd say. Um, 
I think that for me, I have to be at home during certain hours of the day um, and I have to be at, at the office certain hours of the day. And so um, leaving at five and um, going to pick up my two children and then if I need to do more work, getting on and um, accessing whatever I need to do remotely um, has been really helpful. I think in terms of work-life balance, a difference between the lab and the job I'm in currently is Science never stops, at least in my experience. You're always having to take care of your animals, split cells, um, continue an experiment over the weekend. Um, in my job, unless you're traveling, there are rarely times where you have to answer an email right that moment on the weekend. Um, it's usually something that can wait till Monday or at least wait until um, you know, you're able to answer it. And so I think that's been a really great um, transition, something that I really appreciate now having kids um, in terms of work-life work -life balance. Yeah, well, thank you so much for coming back and talking with us. We yeah. really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.